So she came to the retreat and she just had an amazing encounter with the Lord at our retreat. And she admitted to us that when she got back home, she was planning on, on killing herself. Yeah. But the Lord transformed her yeah. that weekend. And so when she got back home, she ripped up the suicide notes. She got her wedding ring out of the trash mm. and um, rededicated herself to Christ wow. and is now one of our um, <sighs> most influential speakers for our ministry. And she's getting her PhD and um, she's thriving. Yeah, I want to touch on the criticism that comes from the Christian community. I, I think I'm using that label correctly, but when I hear the stories, I'm not sure how deep their relationship with Christ is. And that's a, you know, I get it. That's a chiding statement. But um, people in your sphere, Christians that contact you, will say what to you in their criticism of your ministry. I think the most common thing is, you know, these are baby killers. Why would we want to help them? Uh, they, you know, made let their, them suffer. Right, let them suffer. They've made their bed. They can lie in it. They don't deserve heaven. Uh, they deserve wow. to, to be in hell. And I think if if we as Christians really understood hell, we would never wish that on anyone. Well, that's the Lord's heart. And that's the Lord's heart, right? So he wants everyone to be, to spend eternity with him. And and certainly we must be accountable for what we've done, right? But uh, he doesn't want anyone to spend eternity in hell separated from him. And so that's our great commission, right? To spread the gospel yeah. to everyone. Well, and not only that, but, you know, this idea that we're better than somebody else right. is dangerous. Right. I mean, Jesus himself spoke to that. We all sin, right? We yeah. just sin differently. And these workers are, are sinning differently and it's a it's a grievous sin but no one is too far gone for the mercy of Christ and I think that you know we have seen great strides in the pro-life movement you know just mercy being spread just you know in the past 10 years since our since our ministry has grown and and, and spread and I do think that part of that is because of what we're doing uh, because we are bringing some humanity back into the pro-life movement through sharing these stories of these, these abortion clinic workers. But I think that when we first started, we were really trying to, to create a paradigm shift in the movement because I think what it done, anytime there's human tragedy, people try to find someone to blame. That's very natural. And so I think the natural person to blame with the tragedy of abortion is those who are assisting with committing the abortions, right? The abortion clinic worker and the abortion doctors. So that was natural, but what had happened was that the pro-life movement had done to the abortion clinic worker COVID to Janaya. COVID to Janaya.
今年はああ,ああいうのはさあの U ターンするあれ決まる場暇の中ないでしょだから余裕見て U ターンした方がいい<笑>だってあの私が叩いた時にあ,のあれでしょあのひびが入ってそれを埋めたわけそんなのは昔の話でしょ人間の骨とか体っていうのは自分の力で修復するんだからあれがあの年取ってもろくなってるからもろくなってるのは食べ物でしょだからそ,のそこそころにやったところがもろくなってまた痛くなっていバカじゃないの物を食べるでしょ人間はどんなものでも人間の体っていうのは自然治癒力があるんだから修復していくの自然に年を取って修復するって聞いたことないけどなってるでしょうよ私だってそうでしょうただそれが早いか遅いかの問題あと食べ物によるでしょう今薬も取ってるんだからビタミンもおかしいね
もっと勉強しなさいつまんない YouTube 見てるんじゃなくて Glenda loves listening to focus on the family for her daily dose of godly encouragement and I am technically a family of one never married unintentionally single and
spend eternity, who already knows how you're going to respond to this particular situation. There is no escape. He says, as we said before, thou hast set our iniquities before thee, <coughs> our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. He knows all about them. Now, because he does, when you and I come to confess them to him, when we come to confess them to him, listen, we are not giving out knowledge of something he doesn't know. What we're doing is revealing the fact and expressing our regret and asking for his forgiveness. We are expressing something from our heart to him. We are not giving information. We are submitting ourselves to his sovereign rule and control in our heart. But the third aspect of his omniscience that I want to dwell on, this is the most important part, I believe, and that is the fact, the fact that God is omniscient is one of the most comforting thoughts to be found anywhere in the Word of God. The fact that God knows all about us. Now, let's go back to uh, Psalm 139 now and back, if you will, to uh, verse 15 and 16. He says, My son <laughs> was not hid from thee, when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect or incomplete. In the book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. That is, even before you were born, every detail God already had done. There are no details unknown to God about us personally. And I think the way he said it in verse 15 and 16, he said it so beautifully. He said, even before we were born, God had the blueprint of our life and every intricate detail, every cell of our body, our temperament, all of our emotional being was perfectly known to God. The second thing, he knows all of our needs. And when you think about it, uh, Searchlight, and listen, 
The scripture says, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Now, had we been writing that about anybody else, we would have said, and Jesus went looking for them. It doesn't say that. Jesus went unto them. He went straight to them. Did you know that there is never a time in your life and my life when we can ever get in a place of distress, a heartache, a burden, a sorrow, that he does not know exactly how we feel. Now listen, have you ever been to bed at night? You cut the lights off and you lay there and you wept and you wept and you wept and you wept and you were all alone. Nobody knew you were crying but just you, but God knew. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Sometime we just need to know that he knows. Maybe you've done your best as a student and your best isn't good enough and you're flunking your courses and deep in your heart you know that as best your heart knows the truth you know you've done your best somebody understands when you're falsely accused verbally abused and everybody seems to be riding on your back and you don't know what to do next is somebody who knows exactly how you feel when your heart gets broken <coughs> and it gets shattered and it seems that nobody else in the whole world loves you nobody cares somebody who knows somebody who cares somebody who loves you maybe you're single because you're a widow because you've never married because you're divorced and you look around the walls of that apartment or that house and you think, God, I cannot stand this encompassing, enveloping, enclosing, vice-like loneliness that keeps moving in upon you. But somebody who understands exactly how you feel. And when disaster comes and there is no word of consolation, they, people can say anything they want to say, but they'll say, I know how you feel, and you know in your heart, no, you don't know how I feel. You can always count on the fact that somebody does, and he's God. He always knows exactly how we feel. So I got to thinking about my own life. I thought, well, now, Lord, you knew my father would die when I was seven months of age. You knew what my mother would have to do. You knew all the things that I would feel growing up. You knew all of these things. And what have you done? Having known all of that, you were never behind, never surprised at anything I would do, anything that I would feel. You were always there to love me, direct me, assure me, help me, forgive me, overshadow me, undergird me, surround me, teach me all the things that I needed. You would always be there to work them out. Now listen, you see, back here when you were born, whatever kind of home you grew up in had a far <coughs> lasting effect and more influence on your present life today than any of us who ever liked it before. That's where it all started. Our attitude about ourselves, our attitude about others, our attitude about God. Our attitude about life, our whole perspective of things began back there. And because it did, God knows why we are where we are tonight, wherever that is. And so what does he do? He's always willing at any point with a loving, outreaching hand to help us through whatever difficulty we may be facing at the moment. And you see, you'll do some things you don't understand why you do them. You'll feel some things that you don't understand why you feel them. You'll think things that you don't quite understand how it all fits together. He understands beautifully and perfectly what's happening. Because you see, he knows the end of our earthly life as well as the beginning. And he sees the whole picture in every age and every area of our life. And he knows why we respond the way we respond. No surprises to God. And so what does he do? 
He's always working in our life. Now listen, watch this. Some people would have enormous difficulty in their life. He could have changed all of that, but he didn't. Now why didn't he change these things? One of the reasons is because what great difficulty God may allow in our life. If we can respond in the right way, what will he do? He will take these difficult, sorrowful, heartbreaking, heartrending things that we would like to bypass in life, and he will make them a part of our very being. And he'll turn all the things that seem to be bad in our life into good in what happens. At a point in their life, he'll make all those things to become a blessing in somebody else. But I mean, somebody says, but if I just knew more, if I just understood more, let me tell you something. Did you know that God is willing to unveil more of his mind to you than you're willing to accept? <coughs> Look, if you will, in First Corinthians chapter 2 and uh, verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now, how do you know everything that you know about God? Of God reveal it to you. You may have been reading the book. God reveal it to you. But he the last verse of that chapter. Verse 16. Who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have present tense the mind of Christ. Now listen. What does that mean that you and I have the mind of Christ? Right, now listen. There are many things about our own lives that we'd like to know more about. There are many things about God we'd like to know more about. And listen, everything you and I need to know, God is willing to reveal. There are some things we think we need to know we don't need to know. There are some things we just have curiosity. We just have curiosity. And he understands that. It doesn't bother him. Everything we need to know, God is willing to reveal. He's far more willing to give us more of His mind than most of us even want. Now, I'll tell you why you can get most of His mind. When you have a copy of the Word of God in your hand, and the Holy Spirit in your heart, willing and ready to teach you, you have access to the mind of God and all the knowledge you ever need. You see, he has already proven to the fact that he's given us his mind in the written word. He's given us his teacher in the Holy Spirit. We don't want to know. Don't tell God that you want to know unless you are in the word and you're asking the spirit to teach you. How do you get the mind of God? I think there's several things involved. Number one, if you're going to get God's mind and begin to see things from God's perspective and see them as he wants you to see them, the first thing you've got to do is to submit as a Christian, is to submit your will totally, totally, absolutely, as completely and as thoroughly and as unreservedly as you know how to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He is absolute Lord as best I know how. Number one. Number two, I must systematically go to him daily in his word, on my knees, doing what? Reading the word, talking to him, reading the word, talking to him, talking to him, reading the word, listening to him. You see... If you're going to find the mind of God, you've got to be submissive to his will. Secondly, you've got to get in this book and begin to get his thoughts into your mind. Listen, I don't mean just read through some passage. You've got to get to the place that whatever he wants is what you want. 
then you've got to get in the Word. You say, you can't get in the Word just when you get in an emergency. You've got to get in there and stay in there. If you want to know the mind of God, every day, talk to Him. Listen to Him. But listen, the talking and the, and the devotional reads one thing, but you've got to learn to listen to God. Listening is being quiet after you've read and prayed and don't say anything. Well, I think there's one other thing. You've got to commit yourself to be obedient before you even know what's going to happen. But that's part of the submission. But the fourth thing is this. You've got to give yourself away in service to God. Why should he start telling you anything that you're going to keep to yourself? Not going to share it. Not going to share your life with anybody else. You're just going to live your life in your little old personal nutshell, and you're just going to do things just like you want it, but you're going to live your life, and you just want God to show you, and he's not going to do it. Okay. You see? If you submit yourself to him and you tell him, God, I don't understand. I don't know what to do next. I need wisdom. I need guidance. I need your mind in this thing. And whatever you say, I'm going to do it. Do you think God would sit up in heaven and say, let's just see how long he's willing to wait? No. I said to you before and I'll say again, he's far more willing to tell you what you need to know than you're willing. But let me tell you something. Can you tell me anything any more valuable in human life than to have the mind of God of anything? Thanks for joining us for In Touch. The teaching ministry of Dr. Charles Stanley. God doesn't instruct us just so he can give us information. He intends for us to follow through and do what he asks. If you need help knowing what God wants you to do, visit intouch.org and search our free resources that can help you understand and apply the Bible to your everyday life. And to review what you heard today, click the Today on Radio link on our homepage. Navigate to our online bookstore if you'd like to order a copy of today's complete message, The God Who Knows All. It's also included in our teaching set, The Character of God. Again, log on to intouch.org or call 1-800-IN-TOUCH. To write to us, address your letter to In Touch, Post Office Box 7900, Atlanta, Georgia, 30357. Do you ever wish you had a bird's eye view of things that are going on around you? Today's moment with Charles Stanley is coming up. At times, life can be stormy, and each one of us will face many trials. Questions are asked, and doubt may set in. The answers are found through faith in Jesus. He is within every believer, always ready to offer us comfort, hope, and peace in times of great trial, so you can trust him with any circumstance. To order Dr. Stanley's book, How to Let God Solve Your Problems, call 1-800-IN-TOUCH or go to intouch.org store. In Touch Plus is streaming on local...